Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Eric Johnson from Air Tate Throws Nation, and we're going to kick things off because there's always a ton to talk about when it comes to how do we get better as a thrower throwing the shot putting the discus. How do we coach better? How do we throw farther? How do we do all those things? Now, one of the common things that we always talk about, it's actually one of the core principles that is inside of our training program, is that we talk about how important it is to carry the discus correctly. Okay, so um, holding the implements, that's what we refer to as, you guys all know I got my six pillars, and we talk about the throwing chain reaction system, but we talk about six pillars, but there's actually one called pillar zero, motivated, inspired by one of our longtime great members, uh, Mark Harsha out in Indiana, great guy, great coach, and he was like, hey, Eric, why don't you call it pillar zero? So anyway, long setup, because today what we're going to do is dive into it. I'm going to show you how critical that is, because if you don't carry the discus right, it's going to cause a lot of problems. And a lot of times those simple technical issues that you're facing really boil down to some weird stuff you might be doing with the discus. Now, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you this thrower, and this is a perfect example. Now, we're going to play this, and I zoomed in. I'm going to show you some other throwers here in a sec. Hang on, go through. I'm going to show you multiple things. Now, watch her hand as she moves through. So it's kind of fast. This is a athlete who threw 120 feet as a sophomore. She's one of my athletes from Florida, came in for some training. And so look at what she does with the discus. Watch how the hand here, it's going to start turning. And then so she kind of turns it down, drops the arm, faces it up. We call this plattering. So you'll see that I've talked about cupping. Now there's an angle. You can have an angle on the discus, but there's a difference between cupping the discus plattering the discus or holding the discus optimally or let me let me let me clarify that angling the discus cupping the discus right and so a lot of times athletes cheat like this or they cheat like this this isn't optimal so what does this do this is going to lead to a couple of things now it's always the chicken or the egg and this is why we talk about a chain reaction we want to look at what causes problems <clears throat> oftentimes Movement issues can be related to a number of things, strength related, but oftentimes carrying the discus is one of those things that gets overlooked. So watch as she comes through. See how she kind of comes low. She gets to a high point almost, it's too early, and watch the discus turn over. Oh, so this is why we do this. Well, she's opening the left side. Oftentimes that can contribute, but when you actually look at how this athlete is holding the implement she'll level it out and then she'll spin the discus and actually get a decent release so some people say well it ends right well it's not right right so this is the thing you want to see so when we dig at that and we were already starting to play with it so what does she tend to do she tends to actually hold the discus let me grab my trusty discus who doesn't have a discus sitting next to their desk okay so she tends to actually sometimes do this we were playing with it because she will actually hold the discus almost like in this down position like this at the back of the wind so she does some different things and this is where a perfect example you could be throwing pretty well but not holding the disc is optimally so that's one of the things so before I pick on her too much this is something we're working on so we're trying to maintain the position the narrow sweep this is usually an indicator of the upper body but why is the upper body active this can be a comfort factor, right? So a lot of times it's not just about the mechanics, the point of the discus, because everybody's an individual and they're going to hold it slightly different. The key is how do you find what's going to work best as long as you can keep the discus back. If you look at all world-class throwers, there's more in common than there is not in common. And But the most common things you're going to see are going to be those angles and that comfort factor through the wrist and believe it or not that's a huge deal so that's why i'm kicking this off i've seen it this was what we call as a private accelerator camp where we limit the number of athletes um so we we've we host these they sell out pretty quick but the idea is we grind and we throw and we're looking for all these little details so let's look at this athlete all right so here's our next guy all right so this is bryce ruland last year he uh, was the Nike High School National Champion of Discus, PR 213. Okay, so now watch, watch the difference in the setup. So if we kind of center these back a little bit, and you can just see that. And let me get my mug out of the way here. Okay, so when you look at this, so see how, see how there's a little difference? Now, again, 
Some athletes are going to carry the disc is higher, lower. Everybody will say, you know, better, taller is better. It is, but you can go back to like legends from decades ago, and you got like John Powell who used to carry it lower, and then you got Mac Wilkins who kind of carried it higher, and Wolfgang Schmidt. You go back to that area, so guys can carry it. Christian Shea carries it a little lower, um, you know. And then Daniel Stahl carries it higher, so they both throw 70 meters. So as long as it ends up kind of in the right spot at the high point in the middle, that's key. But they all carry the discus and fly it super efficiently. This is a big deal. So when you go here, so look at Bryce, look at his hand carry. So look at the position of the discus. You see how this is cupped? Now, are there some athletes? You look at Sandra Perkovich, right? If you look at Valerie Allman, there's something kind of similar here, but not at this phase. We don't see the discus up here. Okay, so you see how Bryce is going to be able to keep that edge up, and it's kind of how you drag the implement behind you, right? So as Bryce comes around, now Bryce does a little premature turnover as well, and this is something we're looking at. And we want to get a little higher. We're not necessarily trying to turn and change all these radical things, but here's a difference. You can see it's affecting his high point. This is something we just want to improve efficiency on. He's already thrown 213 as a junior. That's a big throw, and we were working on a lot of things while he was out here, especially this, squaring up to the throw. But that'll be another video. So watch as he turns over that discus. He's going to kind of generally keep it up higher. You notice how right here she's got it down. It's it, it turns over. So when we look at these guys, see how she turns it over. See how he's keeping it here. We'd like to see it a little higher, do some things. He made some good adjustments over the weekend, but you see how she opens. This is part of the issue, why it's coming over. So why does she open the upper body so much? And is it because of how she's carrying or is it, you know, and what I can tell you from spending hours training this athlete, the hand carry, it's, it's uncomfortable. She's never comfortable. So there's always a compensation. So a lot of times you guys are hitting weird technical stuff and it's like, it goes back to as simple as something is holding a discus. So this is why we call it pill, Pillar Zero. This is why we have a whole program called Flight School. It's got 21 drills. We break the wind, the swing, everything. It's four basically areas, the grip, vertical swing, horizontal swing, and swing and you know wind and throw. So when you put all that together, um, that is going to show you how to have like the ultimate discus warm up. So we do that and we work on these things. And I always tell everybody, I've got examples of 200 plus foot discus throws, guys who throw 220, and guys who can throw 230 consistently. And the data shows that the 230 guys actually spin the discus better and fly it better. It's a big deal. So if it works for the best in the world, it's going to work whether you throw 80 feet, 150 feet, 180 feet. It's something you always want to do and improve on. This is a common thing we see. We go through it pretty extensively. We spent two hours the other night with all of our uh, TCR method. That's our live weekly program that we do. So we, co we, we cover a lot of detail, and it's those small things that keep you guys from hitting those big results. So a little longer than I intended, but hopefully you guys enjoyed kind of checking this out. You can see what I'm talking about. Go out, video yourself, see how you're moving the discus. Are you, are you plattering? Are you cupping? Are you doing some weird stuff that's causing you to get, are you turning over the discus in the middle of your throw? Like you see Cloel, is the discus coming in front of you? These are things that are usually indicators that the grip and feel and comfort factor isn't there. You can see Bryce here, look at how back, how far that discus is back. And again, these are the things that, really sometimes you're focusing on technique and it sometimes goes down to something as simple as this all right guys so if you guys like information like this thanks for watching this regular weekly tip so kate stay tuned we'll keep sending out more tips we want to get you fired up be sure to check out our throwing chain reaction system and tcr method that is new live weekly training we have athletes all over the country attending live learning getting their drills their rope programs everything you need to train better and farther and get real-time feedback every single week. Okay, guys, thanks so much, and we will see you guys next week. Later.